In the past 60 days, two comets have appeared on opposite sides of our planet, both blazing green, both with sunward-facing tails, and both suddenly erupting with jets no one predicted. Official surveys missed one until it nearly brushed the sun. This is not just a cosmic coincidence. It exposes how blind we are to objects closing in, and it hints at mysteries mainstream science cannot yet explain. What are we really facing as these living comets close their pincer around Earth? A digital clock ticks forward, September 12, 2025, 0416 UTC. In the control room of the Solar Wind Anisotropies instrument, called SWAN, an operator scans a fresh ultraviolet image, the hydrogen Lyman Alpha glow filling the screen. A bright, unfamiliar smear stands out against the usual haze. Coordinates are logged. The object sits just 0.565 astronomical units from the Sun and 1.07 astronomical units from Earth, barely 49 degrees from the solar glare. It should not be there. No ground-based survey flagged it, no early warning, no public alert. Only after the data is stacked and re-examined does the full picture come into focus. A comet, later named C2025R2, called SWAN, has just been caught at the exact moment of perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun. The Minor Planet Center receives the report and issues circular MPEC 2025-R102 by the next day, confirming the find. But the comet's presence is already old news to the solar system. By the time it appears in Swan's field of view, R2 has been racing through space, its coma growing brighter and larger with every hour, invisible to telescopes on Earth due to its tight angle from the Sun. The orbital playback tool rewinds to that instant, freezing the comet's path at the precise time of discovery. The numbers are stark, heliocentric distance, geocentric distance, solar elongation, all logged with the precision of a mission clock. The operator's screen displays the comet's position relative to Earth and Sun, the trajectory slicing through the ecliptic. There is no pre-discovery image, no earlier warning. Only after the fact does the world learn that a green comet has slipped past the usual net, detected not by a watchful eye on Earth, but by a spacecraft parked at the L1 point. The playback holds on the timestamp, September 12, 2025, 0416.1 seconds. UTC, before time resumes. The comet's path continues, moving closer to Earth, its activity increasing, the detection gap now a matter of public record. The moment is a reminder. Even with a sky full of telescopes and satellites, the first sign of a new visitor can still arrive late, almost by accident, caught in the act only because a single instrument happened to be looking in the right place at the right time. The discovery of C2025R2 Swan at such a late stage is not an isolated oversight. It points to a persistent blind spot in how the sky is monitored for fast-moving or sun-hugging objects. Modern survey telescopes, both ground-based and in orbit, systematically avoid regions close to the sun. The reason is simple. Sunlight overwhelms sensitive detectors, making it nearly impossible to distinguish faint objects against the glare. As a result, any comet or asteroid that approaches within about 20 degrees of the sun's position in the sky becomes nearly invisible to most standard surveys. This creates a hidden zone, an area that can span more than 10% of the entire celestial dome at any given time, where even large active comets can slip by undetected until they emerge into darker skies. Survey cadence adds another layer of vulnerability. Automated sky surveys like PanStars, Atlas, and Zwicky Transient Facility scan the night sky on regular schedules, but their coverage is never truly continuous. Gaps of hours or even days can open between passes, especially in regions that are already difficult to observe due to weather, moonlight, or technical downtime. The SOHO SWAN instrument, which finally caught R2 SWAN, is one of the few tools capable of peering into these solar-adjacent regions. Even so, it operates with a cadence of about six hours, and it mainly captures objects emitting strong hydrogen signals. Many comets, especially those low in water or with unusual compositions, might never appear in its field of view at all. Statistically, the lost sky at low elongations means that a significant number of near-Sun objects likely go undetected every year. 
Some estimates suggest that up to 15% of the sky is effectively off-limits to ground-based surveys at any given time, with the percentage rising during certain seasons or for specific survey programs. This is not just a technical inconvenience, it is a systemic vulnerability. While attention often focuses on dramatic discoveries and rare alignments, the more pressing reality is that entire classes of objects can approach, brighten, and even pass close to Earth without ever triggering an early warning. The late appearance of R2 Swan, only flagged at perihelion and missed by all ground-based networks, is a case study in how easily our monitoring net can fail. For every comet we catch in the act, there may be others moving through these hidden corridors, unseen and untracked, until circumstances or luck bring them into view. 3i Atlas arrived from deep interstellar space, speeding into the solar system on a hyperbolic path with an eccentricity greater than 6, far beyond the reach of any ordinary comet. Its orbit, nearly retrograde and skimming just 5 degrees off the ecliptic, placed it on a collision course with sunlight and scrutiny. As the object neared the Sun in October 2025, astronomers worldwide turned their attention to its spectrum. The James Webb Space Telescope recorded a chemical signature that immediately set 3I Atlas apart. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water vapor in its coma was among the highest ever measured, outstripping even the famously odd interstellar visitor, Borisov. Instead of the typical dominance of water vapor, 3I Atlas released more carbon-based volatiles, a hint that its icy core formed in a very different environment than anything native to the solar system. Dr. Anita Cochran, a comet spectroscopist, led a team analyzing these findings. Her group found that the dicarbon C2 emission was off the charts, explaining the green hue that made the comet stand out even to amateur observers. Yet the dust-to-gas ratio was unusually low. Unlike most comets, which trail thick clouds of dust, 3I Atlas was gas-rich and dust-poor, producing a compact coma and a faint, sometimes sunward-facing tail. The jets erupting from its surface were few but powerful, driving changes in the structure of the coma on timescales of hours rather than days. These eruptions did not follow the usual pattern of solar heating and outgassing. Instead, they hinted at a crust hardened by eons in deep space, breaking only under intense solar energy. As more data rolled in, the object's stability became another puzzle. Unlike many solar system comets that fragment or shed material after perihelion, 3I Atlas remained remarkably intact. No evidence of major breakup or secondary nuclei appeared in deep imaging. Its activity was dynamic, but the nucleus held together, resisting the fate of so many volatile rich bodies. The combination of hyperbolic motion, extreme chemistry, and structural resilience left scientists debating whether the standard model of comets, dirty snowballs from the Oort cloud, could really account for what they were seeing. Dr. Cochrane and her peers started to ask a different question. Was 3I Atlas just another comet, or did its interstellar origin point to a broader diversity of cosmic wanderers than anyone had imagined? November brings a flurry of activity from the global amateur astronomy community. As the days tick by after R2 Swan's perihelion, images begin to surface, first on dedicated comet forums, then across social media feeds. Early on November 10th, a faint, subtle spike appears near the coma in stacked CCD frames from observers in Australia and Chile. By November 14th, new time-lapse sequences show the feature growing, stretching sunward, and shifting in brightness hour by hour. On November 18th, a set of images from Sarah Thompson in New Zealand captures the transformation. What was once a barely perceptible haze now stands out as a distinct tail pointing almost directly at the sun. Across the Atlantic, Vladimir Bazugli posts his own results, independent confirmation from a different hemisphere using different equipment, yet showing the same rapid change. The timeline is clear. In just eight days, R2 Swan's sunward-facing tail evolves from a whisper to a bold, unmistakable structure. This is not a digital artifact or a trick of processing, it is a physical feature recorded by dozens of telescopes, large and small. Amateur astronomers compare notes, align their data, and debate the best stacking techniques. The consensus is immediate, the sunward tail is real, and it is growing fast. 
Meanwhile, the comet's overall brightness surges. Photometric logs from the Comet Observer's mailing list show a jump of nearly a full magnitude in less than a week. Evidence of heightened activity, possibly a fresh outburst or sudden exposure of new volatiles. Some speculate about fragmentation, but careful scrutiny of high-resolution images reveals no split nucleus and no secondary comae. The fragmentation rumors belong to a different comet, K1 Atlas, which has indeed broken into four pieces this season. For R2 Swan, the story is one of dynamic evolution, not disintegration. The amateur network acting as a decentralized observatory fills in gaps left by professional surveys. Their collective effort provides a robust, time-resolved record of R2 Swan's changing appearance. The sudden growth of the sunward tail, captured from multiple continents and shared in near real time, becomes a case study in how community science can confirm and document anomalies that might otherwise be dismissed as flukes or errors. The comet's behavior, rapid and unpredictable, keeps both professionals and amateurs watching and guessing what will happen next. On a late autumn night, orbital playback software rolls forward frame by frame. The digital model locks in on a moment that strains belief, two bright comets, R2 Swan, and 3i Atlas occupy almost perfectly opposite points in Earth's sky. The solar system, viewed from above, reveals a razor-straight line, R2 Swan, Earth, 3i Atlas, each body nearly equidistant from the center. Both comets are hugging the ecliptic, the thin disk where planets travel, as if tracing the same cosmic highway from different directions. Their perihelion dates fall just weeks apart, their paths synchronize not by design, but by the silent mathematics of orbital mechanics. This is not just a pretty alignment. Monte Carlo simulations running thousands of possible comet orbits show how rarely this happens. The odds of two bright comets landing on opposite sides of Earth within a single month, both near the ecliptic and both visible, are less than one in a thousand, far below the likelihood of a major eclipse or a planetary conjunction. Most years, the sky offers nothing like it. Even accounting for detection gaps and survey biases, the numbers barely budge. The solar system has staged a statistical outlier, a tableau so improbable that it almost demands a second look. For a brief window, Earth stands at the center of a cosmic crossfire, caught between two green active comets on a collision of geometry and chance. Official reports classify C2025R2 Swan as a long-period comet tracing an orbit that takes nearly eight centuries to complete. Its sudden brightening and the appearance of a sunward pointing tail have drawn attention, but astronomers emphasize that these features can be explained within the framework of known physics. An astronomer's telegram circulated shortly after the comet's perihelion describes a classic anti-tail, a phenomenon where dust grains ejected from the nucleus form a structure that appears to point toward the sun from our vantage point on Earth. This effect arises because larger dust particles, less affected by solar radiation pressure, tend to remain close to the comet orbital plane. When Earth crosses that plane, the dust can project as a sunward spike, creating the illusion of a tail pointing in the wrong direction. The same report confirms that, as of late November, R2 Swan's nucleus remains intact, with no evidence of fragmentation. The brightening is consistent with increased outgassing as the comet approaches the Sun, not with a catastrophic breakup. An orbital period of 784 years places R2 Swan among the rare visitors from the distant reaches of the solar system, but its behavior, while dramatic, is not unprecedented. Dust dynamics, viewing geometry, and the timing of Earth's position all combine to produce the visual anomalies that have sparked so much speculation. The anti-tail is real, but it is a product of perspective and particle physics, not a sign of exotic forces at work. Still, the fact that such features can appear so suddenly and so vividly is a reminder of how much remains to be learned about the interplay of dust, light, and motion in these ancient travelers. Wallace Thornhill, a well-known advocate of plasma cosmology, has long argued that the universe is shaped not just by gravity and collisions, but by the complex behaviors of plasma matter energized into an electrically charged state. In his view, comets like 3i Atlas might be more than simple ice and dust. 
They could represent a kind of energy-driven organism called a plasma bion. These hypothetical entities would feed on solar energy, drawing power from the sun's electric field and responding with bursts of jets, shifting tails, and rapid changes in structure. Thornhill points to the greenish glow, the sunward-facing tails, and the unpredictable outbursts as signatures of a system that reacts to its environment, not just passively, but with a kind of self-organizing intelligence. He suggests that when we see a comet suddenly brighten or develop a new jet, we might be witnessing a form of behavior, not just chemistry. While most scientists remain cautious, the plasma hypothesis invites a broader question. Could some cometary phenomena be signs of a quasi-living process, shaped by fields and flows invisible to the naked eye? This perspective does not claim comets are alive in the biological sense, but it does challenge us to reconsider the boundaries between physics and life and to keep an open mind as new data arrives. Calls for action are growing louder among planetary defense advocates. Dr. Ed Liu, a former astronaut and co-founder of the B612 Foundation, warns that detection gaps like those seen with R2 Swan are not just technical quirks, they are vulnerabilities that demand urgent attention. He points to the need for a global early warning network that can monitor the sky around the clock, especially near the sun where traditional telescopes struggle. Recommendations include boosting the cadence of survey observations, integrating more space-based platforms like SOHO and SWAN, and developing new instruments capable of seeing closer to the solar glare. Crowdsourced efforts have already shown their value, with amateur astronomers providing rapid, independent confirmation of comet activity. Advocates now push for real-time data pipelines that connect these community networks with professional observatories, creating a seamless flow of alerts and discoveries. Expanding coverage near the sun is a top priority. Deploy ultraviolet and infrared sensors at multiple orbital vantage points, not just at L1. The message from the defense community is clear, waiting for the next surprise is not an option. Concrete steps, more sensors, faster data sharing, and a coordinated global response are the path forward if we want to avoid being caught off guard again. Right now, two comets defy expectations on opposite sides of our planet, reminding us how much of the solar system remains uncharted, even as it unfolds overhead. Our best instruments still miss objects until they are nearly upon us. As cosmic anomalies multiply, the urgent truth is clear. We are not just observers, but potential participants in events we barely understand. The unknown does not wait for us to be ready. What do you see in the sky?